Today was our final harvest on November the 7th, which is incredible. And it was a good harvest too, really beautiful greens like kale and spinach. We harvested the last of the broccoli. Some parsnips were dug up yesterday, thanks Nan. And uh, the leeks and beets and the last of the carrots. So, so grateful for this season. That's how I'd like to start off is by saying thank you. Thank you to all of the volunteers who have made this garden thrive this year for all the extra work that's going into it here at the end to put it in place. You can see these lovely new rows that are covered in their winter blanket of straw. We've got these pathways in place, things are moved. You know, this green cover crop that's growing and there is still more work to, to do if it can get fit in in the next little while. It, everything's been really delayed because of the weather and still wanting to harvest and then it froze and now it's nice again. So it's been a really wild year, but here we are at this final stretch of the 2023 season and looking forward to next year too. Uh, the plan is still to continue this garden as um, producing as much beautiful food to share with the community as possible. But Sue is really wanting to do a lot more seed saving because as she says, there is no food security without seed security. And having seeds that actually do well in our specific climate is always better to, to keep and rely on because we know that it can actually thrive here. So, you know, as we think back to the year, we had a really good year for brassicas. We produced a lot of cabbage, a lot of broccoli. Um, we did more carrots than ever, than ever before. And I think we still want to keep trying to get them even bigger. The beets, you know, we produced quite a few beets, but that hot summer was a real challenge for so many plants that just kind of went into almost like a sleep mode. Um, but everything bounced back after September, which was a really lovely thing to see too. So as you can see here, you know, there is still a lot of plants to move out. Um, here we have our garlic is planted in these two beds and we're doing a bit of an experiment and one is mulched and one is not. We are going to overwinter the parsley because it will set seed next year. We're going to leave some kale in the ground in order to let it seed next year. Um, and we're going to overwinter some green onions and some spinach as well, but everything else is going to be coming out. And so if you do have any time and you feel like getting physical and getting a little bit of fresh air and coming to this beautiful space, basically know that everything can be pulled and I will put a, a stake in front of the things that are going to remain, but everything else can get pulled and we can be placing things, um, and we have a few little compost areas. If you're ever really unsure, it could even just be piled sort of at the front of the row and somebody else can come through and put it away. Um, at the very least, it can, you know, come to the to the back. We've got a single bay and, and create a little trench, uh, not a trench, pardon me, like more like a mound of, of the garden debris and it can create new beautiful soil to grow more food. So you can see there's a little bit of cover crop back there. That's all that green is oats actually, oats and some existing fall rye. And here you can see we had a little bit of the winter wheat that actually did set seed as well. The raspberries had been thinned. Uh, we'll do some trellising in the spring when things are coming back to life. And you know, we don't need to reset this for the last little bit. If anything was going to happen here, it would really just be clearing the plants. And in that way, if you wanted to come up and harvest the rest of this, this kale, for instance, um, there's some dill seed. Um, there could be a little bit of broccoli left that uh, could be harvested if you want to. Some seeds from some of our plants like the bee balm. Um, and then those peas, we're actually gonna end up doing some chop and drop and, and letting them be a mulch that can feed back into the soil. And with any legumes, you know, you leave the root system actually in the ground so it can fix that nitrogen through its root system. And there's still things like mint and chives and some herbs that can still be harvested. We'll leave the, the pollinator garden sort of as is, um, allow any of the stalks and stems to be a house for some pollinators over the winter. And then we'll see how everything regrows in the spring. So again, it's been a really successful season and we are so grateful to our volunteers. I also want to acknowledge Buckerfields for all of their assistance this year with 
with some of the things that we need, like some of the soil amendments and seeds. I want to thank Reliable Septic for the use of the porta potty that they always have been doing for the last number of years. And that's such a helpful uh, thing to have here to help us be comfortable. Uh, Canadian Tire was really helpful this year as well with getting some new hoses and nozzles. So, so grateful to the assistance that we get, you know, the landowners that continue to allow us to use this land. And Food Action Society um, for keeping this garden going and allowing this beautiful food to come into the community. Second Harvest has always been really thrilled to have the fresh produce available to their clients. And it's because of the community. So thank you so much. We are looking forward to a 2024 season as well and continue to watch and see what we're teaching through the winter so that you can be ready to go and have a really successful garden yourself next year. Thank you, everybody. Take care and you know that we'll see you through the winter to save the date. Coldest night of the year is February 24th and we would love to have a garden crew walking this year for our event. Any questions or comments, please always Melanie Projects at shoeshopfood.ca. Take care.